Hello there, welcome to the Kalashnikov, and yes, version 2.2.0 of Dead by Delight is out. The PTB is out, we have a new killer, we have a new survivor, we have new perks, we have a new map, and we have a whole bunch of new patch notes. What I'm gonna do in this video is to quickly give you a preview of the patch notes, and I'll give you also a quick preview of the new killer, the perks, the new survivor, and the perks as well. So let's get the ball rolling. Alright, so with patch notes 2.2.0, they have made some major changes and a lot of these have to do with hooks and hooking survivors and hooking survivors. So what do we have here? On the features and content, we have one that says it's ad they've added a new status effect for survivors called Broken. So it says survivors are afflicted with the Broken status effect may not be healed past the injured health state for the duration which is similar to the no my through effect. So it's kind of like no my through where you can't get healed to a full state. But unlike no my through that lasts throughout the entire duration of the game, uh, the broken status effect will have a duration, which I believe is usually one minute. So the next feature is they've added a new score event, safe hook rescue. Uh, this current event triggers after a survivor has been unhooked and not down for 10 seconds. So this is a deliberate attempt to prevent uh, survivors from simply farming their fellow survivors. So right now, if you unhook a survivor, you will not get the blood points if that survivor gets down within uh, 10 seconds after you, you've rescued them. So hopefully this will stop all those eugenic survivors who just want to farm uh, their fellow survivors off of the hook. All right, let's just scroll down here to the balance changes. They've also made some changes to the scoring. Oh, let me just move back up. All right. So it says, the score event points for unhooking a survivor before gens, the complete, have been reduced from 1500 to 1000. And then the score event points for unhooking a survivor after the gens are completed have been reduced from 1875 to 1500. Okay, that's not bad. There's also some changes to the unhook changes itself. Uh, the most important one here being the fact that players who have been unhooked or are freeing themselves from the hook will not take damage from killer attacks if they are hit before they regain control of their character. And I feel this is this is good. This is a good change because it's been unfair in survivors when uh, they've been unhooked from from the hook and then the killer swings at them and then they get down instantly even before they've been able to do anything. So I think this is a good this is a good change. Now they've also made lots of changes to different kinds of maps. They've adjusted palettes. We'll have to play on each one of these maps to really see the effects. They've uh, nerfed Blood Lost. You can see the changes for Blood Lost 2 and Blood Lost 3. So, to be fair though, I've never actually really used Blood Lost 2 or Blood Lost 3 before. It's only in very, very rare cases where I even get to Blood Lost 3. So, I, honestly, I don't care about this, this nerf. Uh, I don't. Uh, they've made some changes to the emblems as well. Uh, the most important, th I think, is the one where you can now hover over each emblem to see the activities and actions that contributed both positively and negatively toward your final emblem result. So that's good. Uh, they've made some trapper changes as well, both a nerf and a buff. The nerf here is that a bear trap that is being disarmed uh, will not tra trap survivors anymore who run over it. So that's the nerf. The buff is that the time it takes to disarm bear traps has been increased from 2.5 seconds to 3.5 seconds. And then we have the wraith changes and oh my gosh, these changes are huge. These are massive changes. And I feel I'm gonna have to do a whole video just to discuss the wraith because it looks like the wraith has gotten like, well, I wouldn't say a complete rework, but it's a major rework. This is definitely, definitely a new version of the wraith and I honestly don't know if this is gonna make Wraith a lot stronger. I think these these changes will make the Wraith a little bit stronger. I just don't know uh, just how stronger the Wraith is gonna become as a result of these changes. So I'll have to make a new video uh, highlighting the changes. But let's take a look now at uh, the new killer. And I haven't actually played any game yet as the killer, the spirit. I do have her perks. So let's take a look at the very first one here, which is called Rancor. And it says, you become obsessed with one survivor each time a gen is completed. The obsession sees your aura for three seconds. Each time a gen is completed, all survivors' locations are revealed to you for three seconds. Once all gens are completed, the obsession has the exposed status effect and the killer can kill the obsession. So this looks like sort of an improved version of Bitter Murmur in a way. Um, I don't know 
how frequently I will use this perk, but it does look like a pretty pretty decent perk. Uh, next we have Hex, the Haunted Ground. Two trapped Hex items will spawn in the trial. When one of the two trapped Hex items is cleansed by a survivor, all survivors suffer from the exposed status effect for 50 seconds. This is on tier 2, so I believe on tier 3 it will be for 60 seconds. And then the remaining trapped Hex item immediately becomes a dull totem. Honestly, I, I, I don't... This doesn't look like a really good perk to me. Um, I don't know, because... What ha what's happening here is once the, the totem has been cleansed, the hex totem has been cleansed, survivors will have the exposed status effect for 60 seconds at tier 3. And once 60 seconds passes, that's it. The perk is no longer useful. I don't know. I'm, I, I, you will have to be maybe chasing a survivor or at least know the locations of survivors when that two of them has been cleansed. I, I don't know. I don't know how useful this perk is going to be. We'll have to wait and see. And then finally, we have Spirit Fury. Each bullet you break magnifies the wrath of the entity. After breaking four pallets, the next time you are stunned by a pallet, the entity will instantly break the pallet. You will suffer. You will still suffer from the stun effect penalty. So this is definitely a really good perk. And I feel on tier three, it will be after you've broken two pallets, not four anymore, because it's four on tier one, uh, three pallets on tier two, and then two pallets on tier three. I can see Spirit Fury with Enduring as a very powerful uh, combo. Just imagine how powerful you'll be once uh, you've broken two pallets, and then you have Enduring, and then the survivor stuns you with the third pallet, the pallet breaks immediately, and then you recover almost instantly from the stun itself. You'll become nearly unstoppable. So I think Spirit Fury, as of now, in my humble opinion, is the best of the three packs. That might change as we progress and I begin to play as uh, the Spirit. Let's take a quick look at the new survivor. And uh, his name is Adam Francis, and I kind of like his style. He looks really stylish, I like the coat. Let's take a look at the very first pick, first perk here, which is the Autodidact. And it says, you start a trail with a negative 20% progression penalty for skill checks to heal survivors. For every successful skill check completed while healing a survivor, you receive a token for a maximum of 4 tokens. I believe on tier 3, it will be 5 tokens. Each token grants you a 20% bonus progression for a successful skill check while healing survivors. Great skill checks cannot be performed while using Autodidact. So this looks like a sort of a, an altruistic perk, which can guarantee almost uh, near instant heals once you've gotten five tokens. So this just, it looks like a pretty decent perk. It's just that, unfortunately, me not being the most altruistic of survivors, I don't know how frequently I'll be using this perk. Uh, next we have Deliverance. After performing a safe hook rescue on another survivor, the perk activates. You now have a 100% chance to unhook yourself during the escaped attempt. A successful deliverance from the hook triggers the broken status effect for 80 seconds. Ooh, I think this is gonna be... I, I can almost predict now that this is gonna be an OP perk. An overpowered perk for survivors. Because right now, you are guaranteeing that survivors can unhook themselves. And the penalty, which is that it triggers the broken status effect, this, I don't know how severe of, of, of a penalty this is. We'll have to wait and see. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. This, this is really, really, really powerful, I, I think. We'll just have to wait and see. Finally, we have Diversion. This is an activatable perk. Standing within the kill radius while not in chase for 35 seconds activates the perk. Uh, once the perk is activated, press the active ability button while crouched and motionless to throw a pebble, which creates a loud notification for the killer at a distance of 50 meters. The perk deactivates once it has been used. So this looks like some sort of a perk to distract the killer. And it says you will have to be standing within the killer tail radius while not in a chase for 45 seconds to activate the perk. I don't know, again, how useful this perk is going to be. I haven't played yet as the survivor. I haven't used the perk yet, so I, I'm, I don't know. This, this is another perk where I'm not too sure of. We'll have to wait and see once I get into a game and begin to 
uh, try out the perk. Uh, but that's it. I very quickly wanted to give you guys the quick preview of the patch notes, the new killer, the perks, the new survivor, and his perks as well. I will try to play a few games now and uh, hopefully get to play the new map. Hopefully, I will get to try out the new killers uh, more as well. So, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Bye bye.